Hello, everybody. Uh, security for Wi-Fi Wizard. A couple of people have been asking me, what's an EIEIO? So that's a job once held by Old McDonald. <laughs> so the basics of security, okay? I, I, I gotta warn you, this is gonna be controversial. It's gonna be fast. We can discuss this over a beer later. But I gotta say, some of the things I want to say, Dave Coleman said, so that makes me feel really good, right? That's good, yeah. Um, security, okay? Inconvenience is a hacker's best friend. If I use the word inconvenient, I want you all to shout out, inconvenience is a hacker's best friend. We are not paranoid enough. You can't fix stupid, so said Mrs. Gump. Well, you can help it a little way, but you can't fix it. And longer is better than complex. Okay, let's talk about the CIA. No, not that CIA, the other CIA. Security pillars, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. They kind of been pressured to get two more now. Now we kind of need authenticity, non-repudiation, and privacy, but we back at the good old fashioned CIA, right? A lot of people think that some of the CIA are good. You don't need all three. Well, you make up your minds, okay? If you've got two out of three, are you happy? Okay? You got integrity, you got authenticity, but you have confidentiality. Are you happy? I'm not, okay? So sometimes, you, you, well, always you gotta get all three. There's a famous quote, anybody seen this quote? Know this quote? It was poo-pooed by a lot of people saying this is garbage, it is rubbish, and there was a huge talk about how it's not true. And I, I used the Reddit, because I didn't want to embarrass anybody, because it turned out it's completely valid, and the people who were poo-pooing it were the people that were in the wrong. They didn't understand the maths of entropy. This is a valid statement that it's better to have a longer password than it is to have a complex password. And if you don't agree with me, then go and argue with SANS, Info, uh, InfoSec Institute, the FBI, NIST, and the NSA, because they think that a long passphrase is better than a complex password. Why? If you have a complex, pa complex password, what's the first thing you're gonna do? You're gonna write it down and put it somewhere, right? Okay, and that makes it, uh, makes it more of a threat to be able to break it. Uh, what do we mean we aren't paranoid enough? Well, what I mean is, I wanted to do something, and as always in California in 2022, we check our legal department, and they were horrified and told me I can't do it. So I kind of did it. I wanted to put up a, um, a QR code so you'd all click it. And when you click the QR, don't click this QR code. Do not click, it's not gonna do anything horrible. Well, it's your viewpoint, it's gonna do this. Okay, so you click on that QR code, it's gonna take you to YouTube and we're gonna rickroll, right? You're gonna get rickrolled. So that's as hard as it is for you to get hacked. Now, Dave Coleman and Sam Clements showing you a QR code on the screen is probably not gonna give you virus. It's not gonna give you virus. But when you're in a, a restaurant in Prague and there's a QR code on the table, how do you know that that's the QR code from the restaurant? Hackers are now going around sticking stickers on top of QR codes, so you take a picture of the restaurant and, oh, what the heck's just arrived on my phone, okay? We need to be more paranoid. So if you did click, you've been rickrolled. Wireless is as safe as ethernet when configured correctly, okay? There are only two ways to use wireless, Wi-Fi, with security and without security, nice and simple, okay? Without security is not a bad thing, because you use it in restaurants, airports, planes, trains and automobiles, and so on and so forth. How many of you have, a, have to have a guest network? How many of you use captive portals? How many of you hate captive portals? A typical, actually more people hate captive portals than those use captive portals, okay? The problems we have with captive portals aren't necessarily the captive portals, sometimes it's the clients trying to be clever and trying to make your life better. But if you have captive portals, we have problems. So there are two ways to use Wi-Fi with security, Provider 2.11i, WPA2, and that's personal and enterprise. Nice and simple, okay? So you can come down here. You got personal and enterprise. Of course, only if you use one of these do you get security. If you are using an open network with no, no form of security, you don't get any encryption whatsoever. Of course, WPA3 fixes that, and that's the point of this talk. We need to go to WPA3 quickly. 
Personal, also known as pre-shared key. The wireless infrastructure, the clients share a common password, the password is manually calculated from a key, blah, 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 nice and simple. Perfectly safe. I'll pause, and I can, people are already picking up their ducks to throw them at me. As long as you change the password every so often, maybe every 30 days. Change the password and someone leaves the company. How many of you have pre-shared keys? Don't put your hands up. And you don't change the password and someone leaves the company, okay? They can take the password with them, which means they can decrypt all your data. You know that, right? Okay. You should use a password that's got a serious length or a serious complexity. Longer is better than complex. All of these are very inconvenient. Inconvenient is a packer's best friend. Okay. Alternative number one. I call this IT PSK. Only the IT has the pre-shared key, and you've got to take your devices to them to be onboarded and offboarded. You don't need to change it so often. Uh, no need to change the password when someone leaves the company. Uh, you still need to decommission devices, of course, because they're taking the password with them. Still need to have a serious length of level or, and or complexity. Uh, all devices need to take in the IT department to be onboarded and decommissioned. These are very inconvenient. Inconvenience is a hacker's best friend. Right? Today we have varieties of PPSK, IPSK, MPSK, and all the different names. Basically, each user or each group or each student has their own PSK. Arguably the best method of PSK today. Okay? You can overlap pre-shared keys. Uh, you don't need to decommission devices. If someone leaves the company, you can just disable their PSK. Also a great solution for guest networks as well. Okay? Uh, not totally working with WPA3 today. They're still ironing out some issues, but we're getting there slowly. Enterprise, of course, is the way to go. It requires the use of EAP and RADIUS. Uh, you need to use certificates or a variant of uh, EAP fast from Cisco. Devices will need to be onboarded. All of these are very inconvenient. Inconvenient is a hard You see where we're going, right? Okay. Arguably the safest mode of Wi-Fi security today. Okay. When configured correctly. Okay. Problem with enterprise, users can be given a question saying, the certificate is not valid, do you want to continue? What a stupid question. Quite possibly the dumbest question. We don't think security is, is right, do you want to continue? The answer is no. So you shouldn't allow this. Set it in your group policy, set it under your MDM control, stop it. How about both of these, Phil? They can be so inconvenient. Inconvenience is a hacker's best friend, okay? Uh, very quickly, run out of time. The PMK, if it's gotten from an 802.1x EAP radius, is always unique. The PMK, if gotten from personal pre-shared key, is always the same, always. Okay, and that's the huge problem. WPA3 with the SAE process, which was explained very well yesterday, is, gives you a unique PMK always, and that is the PMK that is used to create the PTK. Right? Fantastic, that's good. If you have an open network, you can have OWE, you also can choose to have a PMK. You don't know about it, you don't care, as long as the client supports it, the AP supports it, you get a PMK, you get encryption. Now, both of these do not give authent authentication. The pre-shared key is used as an authentication basis, but the PMK is used to create the keys. So you may be able to get on someone's network, but you can't decrypt all the data, which is fantastic. So we're safe at last. Now, you probably all know that hackers can break into these, okay? What you probably don't know is hackers can also break into all of these. What? Yes, they can. Well, hold on. If they're configured incorrectly. Now, full disclosure, every single one of them except the bottom one, I have hacked. I used the systems, played with it, and tested it. The bottom one, I know of hacks for WPA3 Enterprise, but they're somewhat theoretical at the moment and they've not actually been done. But WPA3 Personal, if configured in, incorrectly, or if configured in transition mode, I'm gonna have to speed up. Top tips, use the whips. Know your environment, know what's normal, know what's abnormal, okay? Use DNS security. One of the first things you can do is use some kind of DNS security like Cisco Umbrella. When a malware arrives in your company, the first thing it does, it calls out to a DNS site somewhere. If you stop that, you can stop malware. Use PMF, okay? I'm speeding up because I've got 20 seconds left. Lessons, use WPA3 as soon as possible. Don't, don't use transition mode. If you use transition mode, it's WPA2. 
Use a different SSID for each frequency. Use a different SSID for WPA2, WPA3 clients. Don't use the same pre-shared key on your WPA2 that you do in your WPA3, for pity's sake, all right? But Phil, these are so inconvenient. I think we're done there. Last thing I want to say very quickly, don't use somebody else's USB device or USB cable. Keith gave us these a long time ago, it's a USB condom, okay? When you plug in the airport and you recharge your iPhone, if the data link is active, I'll send them, I'm done, thank you.